Um, so our next panelist is John Leanos. He is a social art practitioner who utilizes all and any media to engage in diverse cultural arenas through strategic revealing, tactical disruption, and symbolic wagon burning. His practice includes a range of new media, public art, installation, and performance, focusing on the convergence of memory, social space, and decolonization. He is also a professor here at CCA. So welcome to the stage. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. Let's see real quick here. So um, as a community artist, a social practitioner, social documentarian, um, you know, it, it, it comes up quite often, how do we uh, come to deal with these issues of ecological crisis, and, and which will, of course, turn into economic and social crisis as, as uh, resources get um, torn, in, torn apart and, and less and less available. And so as, you know, as artists, uh, we kind of think about how we can kind of uh, affect this, not, not, not that we're politicians or in the industry, that, but we can affect things on a symbolic way in, in the symbolic arena. And one of the ways is to raise consciousness, right, and, and to educate. Another way is to work with engaged youth and students on the high school level, the uh, middle school as well as the elementary school, but here in, in the college level as well, in order to you know, creatively confront these global problems through a variety of tactics, approaches, design strategies, community development, and input as well. So, you know, building a green economy, right? How do we do that? How do we um, build green collar jobs? How do we get youth trained into not only the mechanics of weatherizing and retrofitting um, buildings, but winds farms and solar farms and wave farms, but also how to have how to have youth be active and conscious participants in our future and the construction of our future, right? And so that, that is really kind of the input or the approach that we can take and the, and the, the impact that we can have as, as artists, I think. And, and if you saw Jay Pugau's um, a, a, a presentation last, last hour, uh, he's really kind of embodying this, right, with environmental service learning, with the Mission High School, with CCA students coming in. Right, right now my students are doing a, a documented film about what's happening at Mission High School, the greening of the curriculum and the greening of, of the school as well. Uh, which is in with the office of the mayor. We all know that you know Newsom wants to be governor, so he's right riding this green wave as well. So we might as well chip in as as well as with global exchange. So, so the time is now, right? So the time is now is that we get engaged in this with um, this bonification of, of of the green green economy. We kind of have to kind of move, which brings us to mobility, right? And uh, I was on this I put on this panel mobility, and I was I was talking to Tears of. Um, and I was like, Tirza, what's, why am I on this, I don't, I don't, I don't know really, what's, what's up with the mobility thing? And she's like, well, you know, don't worry, just move a lot. So <laughs> I've been practicing moving a lot, so don't, no, no shoe throwing or spitting because I'll be ready, just like Bush was. Um, so, but I, what I can do is I think, you know, because I'm kind of limited to space in here and time, um, I can move some ideas around. Um, and that's what um, I think that we can do with, uh, confronting or thinking about m multiple subjectivities, uh, you know, the post-postmodern kind of state status of how we uh, position ourselves as subjects in the world, as activists in the world, the multiple subjectivities, the multiple identities, the multiple localities, the multiple positionalities and oppositionalities, the multiple complicities as well, right, um, and contradictions that, that kind of have, have us in the scattered, um, dispersed, local, global placement of ourselves especially when it comes to the environmental impact of our mobilities, right? So um, let me see, can I get this up here? I wonder if I can, let me see here. What are they? Let me go back here. So, um, when, when it comes to mobility, you know, we get, to, we get from place A to place B in various ways, and we, we're, we're kind of like active, and we can't, you know, be ro too romantic about bicycling everywhere because it doesn't really work. We need to get to Florida and, you know, to New York and all of that. We need to get to L.A. Um, we need to get across the bay, and we can do a lot of things um, to kind of uh, litig litigate the, or mitigate, rather, the, the, the impact that we have, rather. Um, and so, but at the same time, we have these kind of, um, we have these embodied kind of handheld localities and globalities, right, with this, in which we have, you know, the whole world in our hand, right, 
and this kind of disturbingly aesthetic, aestheticized utopian myth of the global axis at no cost is, just reinforces this kind of somber and troubled scenario that none of us here are free from, right? And that is really uh, the uncritical and willing ignorance of the impact of our technologies, old and new, whether from electricity to, to this, um, on the environment, the poor, disenfranchised, and on present and future generations. So how, what is our impact um, liking? And so I'm gonna throw a couple of ideas at you. Here's a, a nice little anecdote. You know, this just came out, China has its electric car program, which is great. That means it's gonna get done, right? We can't, um, the US automotor, uh, automobile industry has been trying to, or been saying they've been, been engaged in this for a while, but they haven't, it hasn't really happened, right? Um, hybrids are pr produced out of Japan, but so, so this is gonna happen. So who, um, that's just a little anecdote here. And then moving to artists here, um, as uh, Ricardo Rivera um, using a, his um, labor, right, to kind of create electricity in a symbolic gesture to say, hey, here's some cold little uh, ice, um, popsicles that you can do, um, kept cold by my bicycling and my hot sweat um, bike labor here. And then of course what you just saw, um, rock the bike with um, 100% uh, pedal power, you know, where they have um, a, a concerts um, a, generated by bike power as well. Um, and the Toxic Tours, which is done by Poder, which is people organizing to demand environmental and economic rights, which the people of color um, taking in their hands this environmental justice. And I want to show you a, a, a small clip from um, a, a Toxic Tour that they did um, last year. Let's see, can we get some sound? Hmm. We can't get sound, let's see here. I like it. Oh, there it is right there. Whether it's from dust in the air. Southeast neighborhoods have long claimed that pollution from nearby freeways and industry is making them sick. And they say the problem is the result of not just one or two sources of toxins, but many. Crown Forest Charles Clifford has a look at how some local kids have been studying the problem and are trying to get the message to those who can help. Whether it's from dust in the air, car pollution, or industrial toxins, people who live in Visitation Valley, Portola, Excelsior, and the Bayview believe their health is in danger. What we want is environmental justice. Yeah. This group of Chinese and Latino immigrant youth all live in those areas. They are part of a program called Common Roots. For the last few months, they have spread out in small teams to study the environmental dangers lurking in their neighborhoods. What they found was not just one or two potential problems, but dozens. Things like pollution from highways and toxic chemicals leaking from gas stations, dry cleaners, and warehouses. And they found that people living in these same neighborhoods have high rates of asthma, cancer, and other health problems. I lived there, and I, know, I was never aware of what was happening around where I lived. You know, all the stir farm nearby, or the freeway that I live right next to, until, you know, we started learning about it and did this project. That's when I actually was like, oh, so this is really going to affect me in my future, you know, like my health. They also believe that this area suffers from what they call environmental racism, meaning that the low income and minority residents here don't receive the same kind of attention from government officials that more prosperous locations do. So they've taken their work and turned it into a toxic tour with seven stops throughout the city southeast, each one highlighting a different problem. It's meant as a way to show government officials what they believe is going on here. Today's guest was San Francisco Supervisor Chris Daly. Uh, this neighborhood suffers from environmental racism, uh, and uh, it's right for the youth to call on city leaders to do more about it. If you would like to learn more about the Common Roots program, go to cron4.com and look for the green scene. We'll have a link posted in the featured links section. In San Francisco, Charles Clifford, Cron4 News. All right, so the green scene. Um, they uh, they did a toxic tour. There's a, there's actually a three part um, series on that. So if you want to check it out, it's really good. It, it, people moving around, um, walking tours, and engaging in the environmental issues of their space and localities, which is really I think um, interesting and important. Um, 